The planar tracking tools have had a huge overhaul with Silhouette 7. So let's take a look at some of the new features and what we can now do with Silhouette's planar tracker. So if I pop into my first clip, I'm just gonna go into the tracker here. Though of course this workflow is identical whether we're working in the tracker node, the roto node, or in fact any of the other nodes that support tracking directly within them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna create up a new layer. And we always have to do this with a planar tracker so we have a reference to apply our transform to. And I'm going to call this one paddleboard right. And the first thing I need to do is create a new shape. And the shape's going to define what silhouette's going to be tracking. Now I want to track this paddleboard here. But the beauty of planar tracking is that I can select just one area. In this case, the visible back area of the paddleboard. And we should be able to keep the coplanar areas the front area, which is obscured by the girl here, we should be able to keep those areas also tracked in quite nicely too. Uh, I'm gonna make the, uh, the shape a little bit of a different color so we can actually see it. I'm gonna make it uh, blue in this case. I'm gonna contrast with the red a bit better. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing. So once I've created my shape, let's go into our tracker one more time and have a look at what we have with the planar tracker. So one of the new things we can do is actually define what we are going to be looking for with the tracks. We have the auto, which lets Silhouette try to figure out what's going to be best and most suitable to track a particular shot. Or we can track corners, so it will automatically look for areas where there's corner point contrast. Or we can look for edges along our shape here. Or track ridges within that shape. Now in this case, I think edges is going to be the most suitable and give us the best result. I am going to come in and just maybe make my shape a little bit bigger there. And when I've done that, I can just come back into the tracker, hit reset, and that will calculate out a new set of points for me. Now the motion model is probably one of the most important options we have for getting the best results out of our planar tracker. If we're only wanting to track X and Y offsets, we would just choose the translation. If we do have some perspective movement, but it's not amazingly pronounced, we can use a fine, which will track the translation, rotation, scale, and skew of the image. If we have large perspective motion, then we can pop this up to use perspective motion modeling. In this case, I'm gonna be using the affine motion model. Now the general rules we'll be using for pre-processing for point trackers are also valid for planar tracks as well. So we turn on the preview here, this will show us a preview of what the uh, of what silhouette is looking at. So we can check out what the different channels are going to do. So this is luminance, or we have red, or we have green, or the blue color channels. And in this case, I actually think the green color channel is going to be giving us the most contrast in this case. I might want to add a touch of blur to just soften out some of the natural grain that's in the image and maybe add some sharpness to bring out those edges a little bit more. And when I'm happy with that, I can turn preview off. I'll reset my minimum distance as well to three. You can see it puts in a lot more valid tracks for us there. And now I'm happy with what I've got, so I'm just gonna track this forwards. And Silhouette will go ahead and just track from the frame that I was working on. And that's looking pretty good to me. And I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna track backwards to the previous frames. As we can see, the shape is sticking nicely with our image. Let's come back to fit this into the screen and I'm gonna select my paddleboard layer and we can actually see what those points are doing. And we can check those out to see if they make sense. And I'm checking to see if there's any sort of strange wobbles that I'm not actually after. Another new feature with version seven is the ability to smooth out these tracks as well. So if we do have a little bit of popping, we can hit smooth. And as I turn that up, you can see that smooths out. That smooths out those lines for me. This is a destructive process. So if you're gonna do it, I'd recommend making a duplicate of your layer before and I'll call this one smooth. 
So we duplicate it before we then apply smooth to it so we can always go back to our original if we need to. This also shouldn't be the first port of call that you go for. If you are having problems with your track, you'll be better off served actually by adjusting the parameters down at the bottom here to try and get a better track in the first place. And we can check the validity of our track here just by going up to the stabilize at the top of the viewer, coming down and we'll choose our tracker smooth. And if I play that back, if we have good tracking, we should be seeing minimal motion going on in our paddleboard area here. Now, of course, we can use this as the basis for our roto as well. If I'd apply this into a roto node, or I can just copy from my tracker, add in a roto node, and then paste that directly into the object list. So if I get rid of that original one here and draw in my new shape, I can use this tracked and smoothed planar tracking data as the basis to do this particular bit of rotoscoping. And you'll see once I've got my shape in place, I actually have to do a minimal amount of correction here, mainly due to the fact that we can now see different areas of the paddleboard as the camera moves around. So if we destabilize this, you'll see that with just a minimal number of keyframes and a good bit of planar tracking data, we would create up this shape with no trouble whatsoever. The planar tracker is also able to track in areas that have almost no texture as well, or texture that might be a bit confusing, as is the case with this tennis ball. But let's see what we can do with the planar tracker here. So again, I'm going to add in a new layer and inside that layer, I will create my shape for my tennis ball. I'm going to make this one slightly smaller than the object itself because of the interactions it's going to make with the background. And let's turn my planar tracker on. And because I've used pre-processing before, it remembers my settings. So I'll just reset that. Add a bit of blur in there. Lovely. And I'll take a look through and I'm thinking probably the red channel in this case is going to be the, uh, the one that's going to give us the most contrast. Taking a look at the auto tracking and having a look through these different tracking features. Again, I think that the edges is probably going to be the way to go for this particular shot. And with the motion model, it's only moving up and down left and right. So I don't need to use a final perspective. I'll just use the translation here. And with all that set up, I can then just track that forwards. There we go. And we just check out the path that the layer is taking here. And we can see we've got a nice smooth track happening just there for us on a feature that actually has some quite confusing movement going over to it. We're able to get a nice solid track. And that's a quick look at the improved planar tracker within Silhouette version 7.